Starting, 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 and we are live. What's going on, everyone? Jay here from Texas Cloud Town, back again with my new co-host right there, Mr. Shane Oakley. What's up, everybody? So first, we're going to go through, we're going to show you all what we're vaping on, and then we're going to get into some really good topics, because as everyone in the vape industry knows, there's a lot of things that that come on that there's a lot of topics that come up so uh we got a whole lot to talk about today and we're probably gonna cut it off a little around 4 30 around there so that way we can get over there to mr poon sauce's channel watch old uncle chris and poon sauce talk for a while but shane go ahead and take it away and show them what you're vaping on man all right it's kind of the same rotation i had last week just a little different Got that uh, Ardent on the Black Keen in there. Got the Sugar Cookie from Cookie Twist. Uh, got the White Dreamer with the Black Axial in there. My all-day merge transmission. <laughs> uh, then I got the Mr. Just Right <coughs> with the Dead Goat on top in there. Got the Sad Boy Shamrock Cookie. And the other one I carry all day, the uh, Profile Unity on the Shogun and uh, the Paradigm Nilla Killer. Nice. And there's a couple of pods laying around here I may pick up and hit off of, but that's the main thing I'm vaping on now. Nice, nice. So, first off, I got my Turk V2 with my Dreamer LE. Been loving this thing. I've been using it. You can tell I've been beating it up a little bit. It wasn't this mm. bad when I got it, but... <laughs> I've been, I've been putting it to use. That's all that really matters. And inside that, I went matchy-matchy. My match game has been going on point here lately with my bottles and my uh, mods. I got that Shamrock uh, cookie in there, one of my yeah. favorites. I'm, I'm, I'm really going to have to do a review with a battle of it up next to uh, Clowns because, man, Clowns got some killer juice too. So if yeah. you all haven't tried it out yet, you all need to go try that out. I know. I've got to get the Mint Me from Clown. Oh, yeah. The Mint Me is uh, – and I, I've honestly been using that in a pod at three milligrams. I told him next time, man, I'm definitely going to need to get some higher milligram from you because I'm yeah. trying to stay away from the salts right now. And then next I got the Ocula on top of the Kennedy Vindicator. And then inside that I got some ripe peach mango pineapple. It's pretty good juice, pretty good. Really been liking that one too. Starting to – get nice and everything outside. So I've been trying to switch over my juices a little bit to some, uh, some good fruity juices. Next, I got the deep cuts psycho criller inside of my anarchist riot with, on top of the saint really bit. I've honestly, nice. this is the old RDA and I've, I haven't been able to put it down. I bought it from a friend and I haven't yet to be able to put that down. Is that the drip tip off of the ocula? Yeah. Yeah, it's a drip tip <laughs> off the Ocula. And I've really yeah. been, I, I've been, I've been switching all my drip tips around. <laughs> uh <-huh. clears throat> and then up next, I got my favorite, one of my all days, every yes. day, the Purge uh, Twisted. Uh, it's the uh, Stingray color, it's blue right here, and then it turns into purples and greens. And then on top of that, I got the Apocalypse 25. New RDA I just got, and I've really been liking that. And inside that, I got some strawberry jam from sad boy really been killing some sad boy juices here lately and it's i'm probably about to start cycling most of them out so that way i can start getting in some of these uh fruity flavors but yeah so for one of the first things i wanted to do before we got into some uh advocacy topics and everything is i wanted to let mr shane oakley talk about himself a little bit he did last uh last week but we got such good feedback last week from a lot of the stooges and a lot of the people out there who are watching it and most of them kept messaging me and saying man i think shane should do this i think shane should be on your show with you man you need to co-host i'm like you know what i kind of do because it's kind of a struggle getting people on here sometimes i mean life happens and there's a lot of people who get busy and honestly someone who's so passionate that's not even a review or anything like that and all he is is just a consumer. I mean, it's it's awesome to see someone like that, someone who can speak. Me and him, we kind of think alike, but he, whenever he, uh, Shane speaks, man, I feel like it's it's just he's speaking with way more than just words. You could tell that he's actually putting feeling behind everything he talks about when it does come to vaping. So uh, go ahead and tell everyone about yourself and 
just a, just give them a little bit of uh, what, what's going on in uh, Mr. Shane Oakley's life. All right. Well, thanks, Jay. Just, you know, first off, thanks for the opportunity. You know, I love to come on with you. Uh, you know, one of the greatest people I know when it comes Thank to this you. kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, we do mesh together and we think a lot alike. And it's so easy to come up with subjects that we want to cover, you know, doing this simply because we think so much alike. And, uh, you know, me, I'm originally from Tennessee. I live in Alabama now. And, you know, a lot of people think that's kind of weird, but my dad changed jobs when I was a teenager and I just had to go, didn't have a choice. Uh, but, you know, I got into vaping around 2014, uh, did it for a while, kind of faded back out, went back to smoking and then got back into it at 2018. And it just kind of stuck at that point. Uh, and once I found the Stooges and Vape Stew and, you know, started realizing how, how important advocacy was, it just kind of clicked with me you know, I can, I can take this to a level as a consumer, you know, I don't have to be, you don't, and nobody has to be a reviewer or anything like that to become an advocate or to become an activist when it comes to this kind of stuff. And that's, that's really my mission is to let the consumers know that they don't have to be a reviewer. They don't have to depend on that reviewer to speak for them. They need to have their own voices heard. Uh, and I want to be an inspiring force to those people and let them know that. Uh, and I think that's that's really the biggest reason that I wanted to do this. You know, Jay, Jay met, messaged all of us last week and said, you know, hey, can anybody come on? You know, my guest canceled. And, you know, it was probably 30 seconds later. I was like, hey, yeah, come on, let's go. And, you know, it's just great. And, I, you know, I appreciate the opportunity and I'm going to work my work my butt off for, you know, for Jay to make his channel grow. And that way his channel can grow and we can get the word out that we need to and get the things done that need to be done. And, you know, that's the main reason I'm here. Uh, but, you know, thank you all for tuning in. You know, I love each and every one of you and, uh, you know, we'll go on, move to the next thing. Oh yeah. And even before the show or even like when we're sitting here, we're uh, hanging out before the show, Shane was already coming up with all these things, man. I've, I've been looking this up. I've been looking this up and <laughs> it just makes it, it, it makes me feel good that I already know that this is his second time on the show. And I know that I'm not going to be the one who's just looking everything up. Shane's already got way more than I had planned already. So I'm like, man, we're going to, we're going to run through these subjects real quick because we got a lot to talk about. There's a lot been going on here lately. <clears throat> Sorry about that, but there's a lot been going on lately. And as, as everyone knows in the vape industry, it uh, tends to change pretty quick. Everyone says, oh, nothing's, nothing changes overnight. Nothing changes overnight. But, I mean, there's there's a lot that changes overnight with vaping. Now, not, not a lot of the laws and everything, but there could be a new law that could be coming in effect. There could be a new law that no one's heard about that they're trying to push through Congress or through uh, your state or through the whole nation. So, I mean, there's a lot that goes on in vaping day to day. It's not just like it's, okay, well, next year we might have to worry about this. No, it's, hey, tomorrow we might have to worry about this. This might be coming up tomorrow. We might have a nine month window to where we can fight it and where we, we can discuss it and get the word out there about it. But there's there's a lot that we're going to have to do as vapors, as the consumers like Shane, me, reviewers, uh, even the even the casuals. And that's one thing that I really wanted to get Shane on here for is because it seems like he's got a good mindset on how we can uh, get to those casuals out there. The people who just walk in and say, hey, man. Give me my sad boy juice and give me my coils and I'm out of here for my sub ohm tank. I mean, and th those people, those are the people who honestly should be fighting for this the most. Now the hobbyist, yeah, of course we're going to fight for it the most because we look into it the most, but there's, I feel like those are the people who should be worrying about this more and fighting for this more because they're the people who honestly might've just switched. And those are the people who, man, this thing is really actually working. This thing's really actually working. And that's when they're the most fired up about vaping. And they might not be actually fired up, but this is the most that they're, uh, how, how would I put it? This is the, this is the, where they're, they have the most, not doubt, but the most, uh, I can't even think right now, but this is where they're going to be, uh, it's, it's where it's going to be pretty much hitting them the hardest the most right now is because they actually figured out vaping does work. 
And if they don't know that there's actually rules and regulations going on, like if your sh- local shop's not saying anything or if you, people who shop online, if, if their online thing doesn't say anything about what rules and regulations are going on, then they might not see it. And that was one of the ways I was thinking about maybe not just, okay, in shops, yeah, it's easy to talk to people. Yeah, you could go across, you could say, hey, man, do you know what's going on around you in the world of vaping and all this other stuff? Do you know what laws are coming in effect? Do you know what's going through Congress? But think about how much easier it'd be because a lot of us, a lot of the hobbyists and a lot of the people who are casual vapers that know that there's online sales, they know it's cheaper there. So that's the first place they're going to look is online. I mean, look at look at how the world's going now. You can go on Amazon and you can you don't even have to go on Amazon. There's a little button you can buy and you push the button and you can have smart water delivered to your house in the next couple of days. Yep. I think about if maybe we can all reach out there to some uh, online retailers, have them put just like a little thing at the top. Usually they advertise some stuff, but maybe they can advertise just one little thing about, hey, uh, Senate bill, such and such. Uh, going in effect this date if nothing gets done just maybe something small i mean think about how many people's minds that could reach just right there yeah and it's i mean it's huge oh yeah i mean it just i mean that's just a thought of mine but yeah definitely we need to get out there and we need to get to the consumers uh, the people who are just the regulars just go in there and get their uh, one two items and get out but we need to make sure we're getting to those people a lot. And then the non-vapers, like everyone in my family who's a non-vapor, I pretty much try to talk about vaping too. They might not care about it, but it might put in their mind for, say, if they have a, someone on their side of the family who's smoking a cigarette or one of their best friends that I might not know smoking a cigarette. They say, hey, man, my, my cousin or my my nephew, he, he does this. So maybe maybe you should try it. I heard he, he's always talking about how it's safer. It's always safer. It's always this, healthier. So maybe that's something that maybe everyone else could do is just talk to your family members. I mean, everyone everyone has a family. So I mean, even if it's your vape family, you could talk to them. But we need to make sure we're not just talking to a brick wall. People that we already know that no vaping is healthier for us. We need to make sure we're wow. talking to the people who don't know this yet. Yeah, and that you know that's one thing we really got to focus on is you know getting those consumers involved and getting your everyday vapor getting your casual vapor and you know it it may be something that we can do you know we can work with the shop work with your local shop ask them go in you know hey you know what can i can i do some some advocacy talks here can you know can i pass out a flyer and you know have people come in you know you know i'll give you fifty dollars that you know where we can use your space for 30 minutes after you close you know something like that you know i'll pay that out of pocket where i just to get people in to where they can hear you know they can they can hear facts that we've researched that we can show them the facts of this is healthier you know this is the biggest difference in this this and this and you know the here's how much tar is in a cigarette and here's carbon monoxide and all the other things that are involved with it and here is an a physical list of what is in e-liquid that we use in our vapor devices and you look at the difference and then you decide on which one you think's best based on the evidence in front of you and then you can either fight for it or you can let it go you know that that's when it totally is up to them as long as we are able to get the facts to them out there that's that's the biggest thing that we have to do and honestly one of the easiest researches to show them like a, a small scale research is that cotton ball one with mm-hmm. the cotton ball in the container. That's probably one of the easiest researches, small scale, simple 30 day, easy research that someone did. And that's probably one of the easiest ways to show someone the effects of smoking to vaping. And honestly, I mean, I, I've shown that to a lot of people. I'm like, dude, I mean, you might not think it, but I could show you a research they've done over two years and it's a bunch of big terms that they found inside of this and that, or I could show you these people who are messing with cotton balls and that might just catch your eye. It's a little five minute video. Yeah. Shows them putting the tube on there and shows them cutting it open and showing how much tar is just in the tube. And that was like, what's going to be like in your throat. And then it shows like what would actually be in your lungs on the cotton balls. And I mean, it was a gross video, but I mean, it, it was something that was super easy to be uh super easy to be able to show everyone 
right away instead of showing them something big that's with a lot of different terms in there that they might under, un, might not understand because I mean, honestly if i see a big term there's sometimes i'll look it up and there's sometimes where i'm like man i i, I honestly do not feel like looking that up because that just doesn't even sound right right so, so speaking of that we want to talk about the icos um there's a good article on it that shane actually found over here on uh times magazine i will drop the link for that one if anyone wants to go see it um but i mean there's a really good uh research on here for what uh some some big terms in there that really kind of might be scary for a lot of people because i mean honestly whenever you start seeing big terms are they just covering something up that's what me and Shane were talking about. Are they covering something up or how did it get pushed through so fast? Why did he have to pay so much mo- over double the money of what you would actually pay to do to get something like that pushed through the FDA? Did he have to pay double to maybe go out there and make it to where it's uh, he's covering up his own evidence and everything by paying him more money to kind of be hush hush about it. So, I mean, honestly, me and Shane were talking about it and we're like, okay, yeah, even if it's 50% healthier for you, it's a good step forward. And he even brought up saying kind of like what Angela said, it's, we don't need to be just like the big tobacco company to where, Hey, we are the only way. And this is the only thing that it should be allowed is vaping. If there's a healthier alternative cigarettes, no matter how much healthier, as long as it's healthier and it's getting people off of cigarettes, that's honestly something that's good. Me personally, I would rather someone not use this product just cause I mean, I, it's, to me, it's like a big – there's there's too many red flags getting thrown up on it for me in my mind and in Shane's mind too. Yeah. So, Shane, what were, what were all the uh, components to it and what would they call – would they uh, name each one uh, of them? Because they, were, yes, they yeah. weren't in, like you said, layman's term. They were kind of just in there. Right. Yeah, let's see. I think I closed that one. Whoops. Oh, no, here we go. It, uh, it actually breaks it down a little bit farther in this other article. Okay. Where it's talking about the bipolymer film filter and it's folded film inside the filter chamber. Uh, you know, and then the filter mouthpiece is made of cellulose actate. The tobacco filling was designed directly for Icos made from a choice tobacco, which this is kind of, you know, what I was thinking about whenever I was watching, uh, that's what she said because you know they were saying or danielle was talking about it's tobacco but but which tobacco is it the tobacco grown out on you know mr jones farm or is it the tobacco that that philip morris specifically grows just for their cigarettes because you know from what i understand that cigarettes or that tobacco is grown with additives and all this other stuff that's already put into it as it's grown and dried cured before it's even taken in to put actually put into a cigarette. Uh, but it's saying, you know, choice tobacco from IQOS. And that's another thing. Uh, and it's an aluminum foil designed to prevent ignition of tobacco. And it's heated and not burned. Uh, and then it says, they're talking about long-term effects here towards the end. But in the, in the Time Magazine article, you know, one of the parts that, that kind of got me was they were talking about is youth a concern? And they're saying no, because it doesn't have, it won't be as popular among teens. The FDA says, since it does not come in fruity or sweet flavors. Okay. From the teens that I've seen and heard, they could care less about the flavor they want the buzz from the nicotine. That's what they're in it for. They don't mm-hmm. care if it tastes good. They just want that little bit of buzz that they get from nicotine. And so you're telling me that, and they're also in here talking about it's going to be around $70. Okay. Well, any vape shop that I've been to for a pod device or vape shops around here, a pod device just like this, you can get for 40 bucks. So you're t- they're telling us since it's 70 that the, the youth won't be able to get it. I call BS on that because 
if somebody that's under the age of 18 can come up with 40 bucks for this, you're telling me they can't come up with another 30 to get something else. Mm -hmm. No. Especially, no if they, especially if they kind of look into it or their schools are making a whole lot more uh, fuss about vaping and they kind of know, okay, hey, well, vaping is really getting looked at pretty hard. Maybe, may, maybe like they get, they see one of their friends get caught with a, a jewel or something. The first thing they're going to do is, ah, oh, crap, maybe we should, maybe we should get off of vaping because man, I'm, they're, they're looking hard for us. And honestly, Teens are going to do what you tell them not to do. I know that I have I'm wasn't a teen not too long ago, or I was a teen not too long ago. So, I mean, it, I mean, they're going to do exactly what your parents tell you not to do. But the whole thing is, is how do you, how do they not think that they're going to be able to get that? And honestly, if they see that like their school or their uh, office, their school officer, or even their parents are hearing all this stuff about vaping. They see it all in the news about vaping and all the teen epidemic, all this and that, all that yada, yada, yada. They see all that. They're going to hear it and they're going to be like, oh, crap, yeah, they're definitely looking for vapor products. Let me let me find something else that's better or let me find something else to use to get my nicotine buzz. Where are they going to go? Cigarettes. Right. Oh, they mm -hmm. hear about this new cigarette thing that, uh, honestly, cigarettes are cheaper, but they're going to say well wh let me wh what's this new cigarette thing that they got out here this new tobacco product thing let me let me look at that and honestly right. i mean it, it's they act like it's not obtainable it is because it, it's the exact same way that teens get cigarettes or vaping products they either go in there the people don't check the ids or they're go or they're having someone buy it for them their older brother their best friend who might be a year or two older than them uh their brother's friend their parents whoever it is like i i honestly know a buddy where his mom at the i think hell i think he was probably only still a freshman so what's that like 14 15 his mom yeah. was buying him cigarettes and he could walk down to the local store where she worked and she, she would just give him the packs of cigarettes here i'll pay for it and she'd buy it and give it to him wow and I mean, honestly, like I, I probably smoked one or two with him the whole time he ever did, but this guy would go through probably like a pack every two days as a 14, 15 year old. And it's the parent who actually bought it for him. So, I mean, that's, that's something that's super crazy is right. it's not, it's not like the, the people are looking for someone else to do. Uh, uh, they're not looking out there saying, Oh, well, I wonder who's buying it for my kid. No, they're the one actually buying it, which was pretty crazy. So, I mean, that was just something that was just really weird. I wanted to bring up, but I mean, if they think that this is an obtain obtainable. I mean, this is super easy. Cause I mean, honestly, I'm pretty sure they think it's gonna, I'm pretty sure they think it's going to, uh, um, not, I'm pretty sure it's not going to smell as bad as a cigarette. So they might smell like a cigarette a little bit. I mean, teens come up with lies all the time oh i was with my uh friend and his his parents smoked cigarettes and we were around right. them and oh that's why i smell like a cigarette mom yeah i mean I walk, we went to walmart and there was people hanging out front that were smoking whenever we walked by mm -hmm. you know, oh, and we were it, talking it doesn't to take them. much yeah. yeah i mean it's so it's super easy to get a lie so i mean there's there's a lot that people can uh people can do to cover it up i mean honestly i came up with some of the stupidest things for not just smoking but other reasons like oh well i had a bad day so i was crying mom that's why my eyes are red i mean yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's it's not hard to lie to your parents i mean they probably are like okay you're full of shit but like right. it's, it's not that hard so um but yeah i mean like this like me and shane were talking about the, for to me this just throws up too many red flags to me it, i mean it, it went through the fda super fast the uh which I think was two years or something like that. And it was, uh, the study was done in China, which is weird because didn't the U S say that they're not taking any studies that aren't done in the U S like, even like if you go to some kind of, if you go to a meeting or anything like that, where they're doing a, a hearing for vape products or sales tax or anything like that, if you bring up, uh, information that is outside of the U S weren't they not taking that? But yet we're gonna take a study done that we're gonna take a study that was done in China, I believe, or Japan. So that to me that doesn't really make sense right there either. I mean, I know it's not something that's going to court and seeing if we're gonna do sales tax on it, but they did a study there, not here. I mean, yeah. it's a completely different culture too. 
Yeah. Yeah. How are you going to do a study there about the effects of it when it's the people are so different? Mm -hmm. You know, the I work for a Japanese company mm -hmm. just about, I would say. 95 percent of the Japanese that actually come to our branch are smokers, heavy, heavy smokers. Uh, you know, there was one, he was our uh, general manager at the time. And he was talking about when he would fly back to Japan, he would do a patch on each arm and chew gum, yeah. chew gum the whole trip whenever he would fly back, because that's how much nicotine he had to have just to get through the flight. Yeah. And I like, I work with a whole, a lot of Vietnamese people and our company is probably the floor workers is probably over 70% Vietnamese. So, I mean, it's, it, it, it's a real high percentage at our work. And when I first started, it was probably about 70% smokers. And honestly, we're going through a big thing right now at our work too. We're they're uh, we're doing a, a big health kick thing at our work. We had a whole bunch of people do this health kick thing. So now we're doing a uh, non-smoking campus. And honestly, a lot of them are like, some of them don't understand it, but a lot of them who do understand it, like, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. I have a boss there who smokes three packs a day. You, can, yeah. you can't smoke on campus no more. And if you walk off the property, you're, you're supposed to be off the clock. And if you're not off the clock, then you can get fired for it. So, I mean, it's, it is a lot of, it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, I don't want to say it's crazy. Cause yeah, yeah. The health, it's a health thing. We should get people off of smoking, but it's crazy how someone could just throw something in there and say, Hey, well, we're doing this. Yeah. And, I mean, honestly, I mean, I, this product right here to me, it just took those are too much red flags for me. I honestly don't see it doing very well in America because $70, uh, a lot of the, I mean, it, honestly, the smokers, if you can't get them to go buy a, uh, an ACE pod, I think it's what's called from enjoy you, at our, at my local quick trip right here. It's probably two minutes from me. I could probably, I can go up there right now. I can buy the packs. I think it's a two pack of, uh, the pods. And if I buy a two pack of pods, I get a fruit or I get a, uh, the, the device for 99 cents. Yeah. So, I mean, and then I think jewel has something up there too. I can't remember what it is, but I know for sure that the, uh, the ACE pod and I've actually bought a couple and gave them away to some buddies to get them off of smoking, but the ACE pod, you can go up there and you can get them. And that's honestly probably where kids are getting from. Cause I mean, 99 cents for a device and all you have to do is just buy the, uh, pods. I mean, that's if, if they can't even if an adult can't even purchase that, which is probably like twelve, fourteen dollars for two pods at Quick Trip, and ninety nine, it's probably fifteen dollars total for the device and two pods. If right. they're not going to pay that, what makes the government think, or the FDA think, or even Philip Morris that someone's going to pay ninety dollars for his device, and then you got to keep buying the cigarettes that go in it or the tobacco that goes in it? Yeah, and I'm pretty sure those are going to be pretty costly. Yeah, heat sticks. Is yeah, what they're calling them. <laughs> yeah, he can call them whatever he wants. <laughs> yeah, it's just weird. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I don't, I don't I honestly don't see it doing that well here. I don't know how much money in sales he made. I don't know if they uh, actually disclosed that and all that. But I honestly don't see sales doing very well here at that price. His price has definitely got to come down a good amount just to be able to make make it go somewhere here. Honestly, because yeah. I mean, you look at all the alternatives here that we already have that are so much easier and simpler to buy. Yeah. I mean, you got the blue, you have the jewel, you have the ace pod and right. uh, all the sigalites and everything. It, I mean, there's so much easier ways and there's so much right. cheaper yeah. ways than buying that. And, you know, here's kind of another point of view is if it will help people get off of combustible cigarettes, I'm all for it. Yeah. But it's still giving you the same chemicals just in lesser, lesser uh, percentages, pretty yeah. much exactly what yeah. they said. It's not as bad. Yeah. And you know, it's it, bad for you, but it's 90% safer, which I aren't like, like I said, I think that that's why he had to pay double. Cause I honestly don't see this thing being 90% safer for you. 
Because if, no, if not, vaping is 95 to 98 or something like that percent safer for you, and there's yeah. only PG, VG, nicotine, and uh, flavor additives, natural or non-natural, yeah. and it's still 95 to 98% healthier for you, I don't see this thing being 90% healthier for you with tobacco. Right. Still being the main component. Yeah, I, I understand. or I've, I've heard that you have to sit there and you have to scrape it out each time, which honestly, that's going to be a big non-seller for a lot of people is they're going to use it for one pack and be like, dude, I, I smoke or I smoke one of these heat sticks or I vape one of these heat sticks, whatever the hell they want to call it. I smoke one of these heat sticks and then I have to sit there for five minutes and scrape all this crud out. Right. The, yeah, I mean, on, to me right there, that's honestly like a hell no. Because right. if if people are already too lazy to buy pods that you have to refill and they just want to buy the jewel pods and pop them in, there's no way people are going to be not lazy enough to sit there and scrape all that out. Yeah. And, you know, there's another part of this article that talks about, will this help people quit smoking? And it says maybe. And then there's a guy, let's see, Dr. Michael Siegel. He's a professor of community health sciences at the Boston University School of Public Health. He says, and this is in the article, if there was no such thing as e-cigarettes and this just came onto the market, it would be a huge step forward. The problem is, that we do have electronic cigarettes, a non-tobacco product that is intended to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So we already have a proven smoking secession product, which is vaping, uh, you know, which there's others out there, I understand, but this is what worked for us. So of course we're partial. You know, we're not saying don't bring this on the market and blah, blah, blah. We don't really have a choice about any of that. It's going to come out. And honestly, in my opinion, it's going to fail. But that's not for us to decide. The market will decide that. And I believe that the market will probably decide very quickly on how this will fail. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even if you put FDA approved stamp on there, I don't think it's going to do anything else. And right. like the Everyday Vapor said, it's pretty messed up because this is the only product or there's never been a product that's passed the PMTA. Suddenly now this does. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <clears throat> and that's where I think the name came in, into play. I mean, you hear Philip Morris's name. That's a big name. Uh, there's a lot of people who's not even in smoking or vaping or anything like that and still know who Philip Morris's name is. Right. And then there's and and then the amount of money he put into it. He pretty much paid double of what you're gonna have to pay. Honestly, I think that's the only reason how it passed. Now, I mean, if it like I did like I, I've been bashing this thing the whole time, but even if it's fifty percent healthier or safer and someone for some reason wants that, I'm all I'm all for it. But I honestly don't see it being 90% healthier for you or safer for you, like it says. I mean, I honestly don't see it just because it's it's the same exact thing as smoking a cigarette, just you're – or the same chemicals. You're just not combusting it, which honestly, they I've heard a lot of stories where people were at a convention and this a lady actually lit it. They said, oh, these are non-combustible. They cannot be combustible. They will not light. And then someone took it out and actually lit it and smoked it like it was a cigarette. Wow. So, I mean, that's – they. I, I can't remember what convention they said they saw it at, but I mean, that's something right there. They said it's non-combustible, but yet it will combust if you yeah. light it. So, I mean, that's just weird to me. Yeah. So, everyone in the chat, if you want, go ahead and put what y'all's comments are on this. Uh, I mean, y'all heard what we had to say about it, but let, let us know what y'all have to think about it while we move on to the next topic. Here's our next topic, and I'll drop the link for this one too. It is uh, Walgreens makes Tobacco 21 company policy. So everyone knows about Walgreens. Everyone knows about Rite Aid and all that, but I think this is just Walgreens. I don't. I didn't say anything about Rite Aid in there, which I want to be – I wouldn't be too shocked if they actually were the next people to do it. But um, just some numbers in this. I'm not going to read the whole article, but here's a here's a quick little number for it. It says, the move comes after Walgreens has been found to have sold tobacco products to minors almost 1,800 times. That's 1,800, 1,800, however you want to say it, times in undercover complaints. Uh, or uh, an undercover compliance of checks 
across its 10,000 retail points of sale. So that's only 1,800 times they've been caught that they've actually been caught by a compliance check. Now imagine how many times, because I mean, Walgreens have been around since I've been a, a baby. I, they've probably been around forever, but think about how many times they've been not caught or because this is only for compliance, undercover compliance checks. So they send someone in there who's underage, they go buy it and they don't get ID, but they still get the product. 1800 times that's so, and it, pretty crazy you know look at that 18 almost 1800 times across 10,000 retail spots that's every fifth store will sell something to an underage yeah and, and then think about how many there are there walgreens is everywhere yeah and then uh shane tell them what you thought on this one also because i know you had a a big one that was <laughs> that opened my eyes like crazy. Well, the other thing about it is what, you know, you think of Walgreens, CVS, you don't really think of a convenience store or a grocery store. It's a pharmacy people. And if they're selling under selling tobacco products to underage kids, there's a huge pharmacy in that store that probably takes up. I would say most of them, you know, 30 to 45% of the store is a pharmacy. What else are they selling? What else is going out either under the table or, you know, selling to somebody that it really doesn't, doesn't belong to, you know, now there's no evidence of any of this. This is just something that popped into my head while Jay and I were talking about it before the show. But if, if they will go against the law, excuse me, and sell to an under sell to a minor, a tobacco product what what says they won't take a laura tab out of the back and sell it to somebody out the back door who says they won't do it nobody does simply because the evidence is there that they're going against the law and they are not doing the correct thing by selling to underage with tobacco products or or even if it was i don't think Walgreens ever sold anything vape related. I think that was Rite Aid. But if they're selling this and they're not supposed to, then maybe they were selling drugs out the back door. We don't know. We don't have any evidence, but it's something that needs to be brought to light. And I'm I'm really glad we could bring this, you know, simply because that's something that needs to be talked about. Oh yeah, cuz I mean like 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 you just said that like whenever you said it, it opened my eyes like crazy. I'm like, I never thought about that. But one of the most known stores for selling products to minors is Rite Aid and Walgreens. And I believe there was an article on Vape News Magazine from a while back where it said, hey, uh, they pretty much had to have a sit down meeting with Rite Aid, Walgreens. I think it was, I can't remember what the other store was. But they had to have a sit down meeting with some people from the FDA on it because they kept getting caught and mm -hmm. they still keep getting caught. But yet, I mean, even if you change the law to 21, that still doesn't make any sense. You're still selling products to minors. It, it right. wasn't, it wasn't yeah. hey, uh, we, we were selling it to people who were 18. No, it was, hey, we were selling people, we were selling to people for minors because we weren't checking their IDs. Okay, well, someone who looks 18 like me, I honestly don't look my age. Whenever someone's 18 or 21, they sometimes look the exact same age. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it might be. And then there was another one on that I think they talked about, uh, where, I th yeah, he said, he said right here, I don't think it matters, uh, 30 years or older. But yeah, like, uh, they said on the, uh, that's what she said. Oh, if, if, if someone looks at the age of 30, then you can sell to them without checking their ID. Well, right. how do you know if they're actually 30? I have a friend who in, in high school, he was younger than me and looked like he was 30 in high school. And we're like, dude, you could easily go buy beer, cigarettes, whatever you want for us. Right. And I mean, it's it, it, it should never be off of looks. It should. I mean, if you have gray hair, then yeah. I mean, you did, probably shouldn't have to get your ID checked then, but... I mean, well, make no, age like should. 60 or something or 70 to where you if, should. 
Yeah. Even if you have gray hair, I have a very close friend of mine that when we were probably late teens, maybe 16, 17, his hair turned completely gray. So Dang. he's been had a full head of gray hair since he was 17. So I, I don't care what you look like, you know, you need to be carded, period. Yeah, I mean, it's not that hard. I, I don't see what the big deal is on, oh, well, we're going to change this. All you're doing is putting one more rule in effect at your store or one more law in effect for the whole nation or the U.S. or the, a certain state. One more law isn't going to do nothing. Right. Tobacco 21 <laughs> is not going to change anything, especially look at Walgreens. It was tobacco 18. They can't follow that law. So what makes you think if you say, oh, well, now it's tobacco 21. Well, hell, we weren't doing it when it was 18. Why are we going to do it now? It doesn't I, make any sense. I honestly wish this article that came out uh, would have said Walgreens makes uh, Walgreens starts to fire employees if IDs aren't checked. This, right. That would have been, been a great story to hear because, I mean, honestly, I mean, I'm not trying to say fire people. Get, uh, they need to lose their job. Discipline them. No one's going to do nothing if you don't say nothing to them, even if they get in yeah. trouble. Or even, even if they just, oh, hey, well, we just had a compliance check and you failed. Okay, so what? If you don't write yeah. me up or if you don't fire me or something, how am I supposed to? I mean, people, are they might learn, but a lot of people nowadays, especially younger people, they don't learn unless you actually have to discipline them. I work right. whenever I was a supervisor at my plant. It, it, I mean, that's something I always had to do. I had to... I had to discipline people. If like, if I just told them, they would say, okay, next day they'd go back to doing it. I mean, you have to discipline them to where they understand. Yes, this is, I, I pretty much have one more leg left and I'm going to get fired. So I need to start checking everyone's ID or like put a big sticky note. I know there's these big things that say we card and check ID and all, all this other stuff. Put a huge one on their computer screen. Anytime it prompts right. something to, like, I know Walmart's really good about it. Anytime I scan anything that's liquor, no matter how old I look and no matter how many people are with me, all of our IDs get checked. That's right. something that I, I want to commend Walmart for. And they're, they're, they're huge. I'm not saying every Walmart does it. Every Walmart around me does it. No matter, even if the people know me. Right now I've had it once where this person does know me and she'll just ask me for what's my date of birth. Because I mean, I was in there like the day before buying a tobacco product or an alcohol, uh, an alcoholic beverage, but I mean, all she did was just ask me for what my date of birth was again because she already knew. But I mean, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, like they're still checking IDs. They're they're actually doing the system right where you're actually inputting what the date of birth is, or they'll actually scan the ID. Honestly, I mean, scanning the ID is not a hard thing. I think I, I can't remember. I don't know if you have to have a certain kind of program. I'm pretty sure you do, but I mean, pay that, pay the pay for that program. All you have to do is scan it. Just Right. One time where you swipe it, there's a barcode on almost every ID. Mm -hmm. all, that's all you have to do is do that, and it's going to show up the date of birth and everything. And if it throws up a red flag saying, no, they're not 18, or it's a fake ID or something, hell, right. send them on their way. And here, oh, here's, oh. The, here's the other part about it. You know, Walgreens was caught 1,800 times. What kind of fines are they having to pay for this? This should be, this should have put Walgreens out of business, in my opinion. Because they should have to pay so many fines for 1,800 violations that they shouldn't even be around anymore. And that's just my opinion. But, uh, you know, there's, and there's still places out there, you know, gas stations and even vape shops. I know of a vape shop that's close to here that sells to anybody. I've gone in and confronted the guy. Uh, he's not from here. I'm not going to say a nationality or anything, but he's not from here. But that doesn't matter if he owns a place. He should know the law, in my opinion. Uh, but these people need to have just erroneous, huge fines placed on them whenever something like this happens. It should be one time and the next time that fine should be so much that you should not be able to operate your business at all. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean... Like you said, we're not we're not sitting there trying to say let's shut down all these places. No, we're not sitting there trying to say let's do this or that. But something like that is honestly what needs to be done to scare the people into hey, 
let me take my five seconds, check the ID. Let me look at the little thing I have in front of me that you, a little calendar thing that everyone gets from tobacco product uh, places. I, I even talked to the person at my local uh, store. She said, yeah, we get these uh, free little ID things from our, uh, from the tobacco vendors. They actually bring them to us. And it's a little thing where every day you just pull it you pull off a part of the calendar and then, it shows you then uh, what by what day they have to have been born and what year, and every day you just pull one off because it'll go to the next day, and right. they get those for free. It's let's take the five seconds to check the ID, make sure it's the right year, the right date, and be fine. I mean, yeah. it, it only takes five seconds. I mean, honestly, Walgreens. Every time I go in there, they are not that damn busy. No. Walgreens. I mean. I, half the time you could buy all your stuff at the pharmacy, which most people go in there for. But if you go in there for anything else, like tobacco or anything else like that, there is like usually no one at that store. I've never seen a full parking lot at a Walgreens, not even on a black Friday. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it, there's no way that they can't say, Hey, we can't check IDs. We don't have enough time. It's too much of an inconvenience. Well, if it's too much of an inconvenience to not get kids addicted to this or uh, teens addicted to this, then maybe you just shouldn't be open. I'm not saying they're the main reason why teens are addicted, but obviously the numbers show that they are a big reason how teens are finding nicotine products, tobacco, right. vaping, and all these other products. Right. I mean, and honestly, like you said, it's just crazy. They've been <laughs> caught 1,800 times. Who's to say they haven't they haven't uh, done it 10,000 times? They've only been caught 18,000 times. Right. I mean, uh, 1,800 times. Sorry about that. 1,800 times. But who's to say that they haven't actually done it 18,000 or 10,000 times? I mean, there's no telling how many times they've actually done it. I'm pretty sure they have regulars who go in there and buy cigarettes almost every single day. If right. you do that every single day, 365 days a week, that's just right there enough to do it. But like you yeah. said, I mean, something needs to be done with these stores and Tobacco 21 throughout their whole – 10,000 uh, retail points is not going to be a, a, a stop to this. Honestly, no, I, I, honest, I don't know what was going through their mind when they thought of this. Right. And it's not going to make any difference. You know, not with, not without some sort of repercussion in place instead of, Hey, we know you've done this 1800 times. You know, why hasn't the FDA gone in and sanctioned them? Uh, you know, the government can do pretty much anything they want, but, it doesn't make any sense how they're still operating the way they're operating. If they've had this many violations, I, I, I don't get it. You know, if, if OSHA came into our place and we had that many violations through, you know, say we had 10,000 locations and we had 1800 violations, we wouldn't know. We wouldn't be able to operate. There's no what? No. Uh, and you know, it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm just kind of at a loss for words and I'm upset about it. Uh, you know, there's really nothing we can do to change it. Uh, but I'm just glad we can get the facts out there, mm -hmm. you know, for everybody to hear, here's what happened here. You know, it's written down right here. Here's the evidence of what happened. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah. And the, the last article I was talking about, the one that I read before this where Walgreens actually did have to have to sit down with Scott Golub and the FDA whenever he was in there. I think they did have something in there to where if they didn't correct it, they're just going to pretty much take away their license to sell tobacco. And I mean, if there's still, if this is still happening, which I don't know what the number was at that time, but if this is still happening and the number is still climbing, then the FDA is not is not living up to their word. Now I know mm -hmm. Scott Godlip's not there no more, but if the FDA as a whole puts a word on something and there's reports about it to where now the public knows about it and they don't do nothing about it, that's pretty much wrong practice right there too. That's that's the FDA pretty much letting it happen. As yeah, I, that's good. as I see too. You know, he had a good point in the chat. You know, he just said it's a plan just put in place. <laughs> To, to give to the FDA and saying, here, here's, this is, this is how we're going to comply. And this is our plan. Mm -hmm. So in other words, it's, it's a countermeasure put in for something that they're doing wrong. But if they were caught 1800 times before that, what, 
makes the FDA or anyone believe that just because they're putting in this countermeasure, it's going to change anything. Yeah. And kind of like you brought up with OSHA with OSHA, whenever you have a, uh, like uh what is it called uh non-conformance with them yep. you have to put in a corrective action and then yep. i believe within six months they have to come back out or six weeks they have to come back out and make sure that you are, c are compliant with the corrective action that you put in place yeah it's, it's not 90, like, yeah 90 days to pay. come up with it yeah 90 days to come up with it and then six months later they come back and investigate pretty much specifically that non-conformance mm -hmm. to see if your countermeasure is in place to see if you're operating with that countermeasure and if the countermeasure is uh uh i can't think of the word but if it's working you know just yeah yeah make it easy. You're, you're compliant with what you said you're doing right and that, that's something why can't the fda do something like that i yeah. mean I, I know i know why they're not going to but why can't they osha does it yeah, you're looking out for worker safety. The FDA is supposed to be looking out for everyone's health and safety. Why? Why can't they do that? Yeah, that's something that's, that's just honestly, I, I don't want to say the word mind boggling, but it's mind boggling to me, man. It's, it's just, it's, it doesn't make any sense. Honestly. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Walgreens. I don't. I don't think I'll be going there. I, I usually don't go there anyway, but. If I ever have to stop at a Walgreens or a CVS, I'm gonna pick CVS because honestly, yeah. I like I like what they did back uh, in a, a couple years ago. They uh, actually cut out all smoking products, all yeah. actually, all tobacco products. Yeah, they took everything out. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter vaping, chewing tobacco, anything like that. Because back then, I was actually chewing tobacco, and I think they had they. I don't even know if they put it on sale or what they did, but I think I think they just gave it all back to the vendor. I don't even think they finished selling off what they had. I can't remember what they did. But yeah, I honestly, I mean, like what was it, Rite Aid? They're gonna they're gonna stop smell they're gonna stop selling vapor products because there's a teen epidemic on vaping. But yeah, we're gonna keep selling tobacco products and we're one of the big causes to why teens are getting tobacco and vaping products. It's Okay, well, instead of you implementing something to uh, – instead of you implementing something within your job to make sure that people are checking IDs, yeah, let's just not sell a product no more because we can't do that. But let, let's keep selling alcohol inside of our stores. Let's keep selling tobacco products that are yeah. way unhealthier. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these stores, whenever they come out with it, they're like, yeah, this will make the FDA seem like we are know what we're doing. But then right. when the general public gets it, they're like, what in the hell are y'all dumb? Or I don't know what's wrong with y'all, but that doesn't make much, much sense to us. Right. And that's a good point. E. He said the, F the OSHA is funded by the fines they issue. The FDA is 90%, 90 something percent funded by big pharma. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Big pharma should not have anything to do with the FDA, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And the FDA should run the same way OSHA's run. They should be funded by their fines or, you know, I'm sure they have all these government contracts, the same as OSHA does, where they, they get some sort of compensation for just going out and doing the surveys. Mm -hmm. But the majority of OSHA money comes from the fines. And I fully agree with that. It should be that way, but it should be that way across the board. FDA should be funded the exact same way. That way they would actually crack down on the people that are doing stuff the wrong way. And they won't be coming up with the useless stuff like, you know, tobacco 21, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it just, it makes sense to me. Now it may not make sense to everybody, but it does to me. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So those were the two main topics we really want to talk about. Was there another topic you want to talk about Shane? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think we covered a lot of it. Okay. So, Another okay. This is something we're gonna do probably like the last thirty minutes of not every week, but maybe every other week. But since I got the new co-host on here, I want to go over it again. Is people in chat you could put on there ways that you think that we could uh, reach out to everyone: the non-smokers, the uh, non-vapers, the uh, vapers that are just casual vapers who just started vaping or just go into the shop and get their two things. But what are what are some ways that y'all think we can uh, 
go out there and actually help those people start spreading the word about how vaping is healthier and how we could actually start getting them to believe vaping is healthier. Cause as uh, Sean Typhon showed on one of his things and he actually sent me the study on it. Uh, there was a, they did a study to see how many people thought vaping was healthier for you. And the number has been declining a lot lately. And that's for not, they, there was a study done by non-smokers and non-vapers or I think it was just by non-vapers. So like they didn't do anyone from the vape community because they already knew that they were going to say yes. They went through like the, just the general public. And that's something that I really want to touch on because it, it, it's bringing up all these topics and all these new laws that are coming in effect are good. But if we don't get out there and actually get people to spread the word out, because a non-vapor, a non-smoker, or just uh, someone who smokes cigarettes – it's not going to say, hey, let me go look at Texas Cloud Town and see what him and Shane Oakley are talking about today. Now, yeah. they might be your friend. They might do that. But if they're not, they ain't going to know what to go look for. They're not going to know who the hell Grim Green is or Crazy Rip Trippers or anything like that. Yeah. They don't know what sickest tits means. They don't <laughs> know what any of that is. But, I mean, it's – it's. what do y'all think we could do <clears throat> to help out them? Because one thing I brought up last week was everyone who was in chat, I set them a goal or I gave them a goal that they could set up for themselves was go to your local vape shop, spend, I don't know, an hour, two hours, once a month, once a week, once every two months, depending on your personal life and everything. But I mean, everyone, I mean, I honestly don't buy from my local vape shop that much anymore. I'll go in there. I'll get some 12, uh, 12, uh, 12 Nick free base, from them now for like my pod systems because they make it in house and I honestly like their juice like that. Yeah. And that's honestly how I started off was 12%. But what, what's, what's a way that all y'all think we can get to everyone? Cause I mean, that was one of my goals was to go sit in my shop once a month at least and talk for two hours about vaping. Cause I'll still go in there and hang out, just talk to the owners, see how stuff's been going, look at their new products and honestly, I mean, they go. There's sometimes I'll go in there and they get slammed, and I'll try to help them with stuff. I'm not a DIY person, so I don't know how to make the juices that they do. And I don't know how they do it, but uh, I'll try to help sell some juices I already pre-made. I'll help them try to sell coils. And I'll pretty much try to get uh, get them the information for what the customer actually wants, so that way I can try to help move on the process and everything. But right. what are some ways that y'all think that y'all can actually help out with spreading the word? That'd be really cool to see in chat. And Shane, I know yesterday you talked about it, but um, or and you kind of talked about it today. But you said you were a, a vapor in 2013, right? And 2014. 2014, and then you fell mm -hmm. off, and then you came back on in 2018. What right. made you come back to vaping? And what made you kind of fall off? Like you kind of thought, oh, man, I don't need this no more. I'm good. And you were done. And then you found smoking again. Or what was the whole story behind that? Well, it was a lot of it was just the stuff that was available in 28 or 2014. I wasn't necessarily satisfied. You know, I would still have the occasional cigarette here and there. And, you know, then it kind of became where it was 50-50 and then 60 40 cigarettes and then you know the vaping just kind of faded out because it never really satisfied me in the first place i was just trying to to get away from smoking you know i've seen what it, i've seen what it does you know my my grandfather died of cancer from smoking uh you know my dad smoked for God, i couldn't tell you how long i mean he's been quit 10 years now so he's he's okay and then uh in 2018 you know i just kind of started looking around on YouTube for something to watch. And I found all this stuff on vaping that I didn't even know was out there mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, started watching stuff and I'm like, wow, you know, the stuff they have now is a lot better than, you know, four years ago. So I was like, you know, I really want to quit. You know, I'm, I'm tired of stinking. I'm tired of, you know, not being able to breathe. And, you know, I want to do more with my kids. You know, I have a, my youngest one's a seven year old. And so he's kind of, you know, he'll bounce off the walls 90% of the day. So, you know, and I couldn't, there's no way I could keep up with him. Uh, and 
so I just said, well, you know, I, I want to do it. You know, I want to, I want to go back to vaping. And so, you know, I, like I said last night, you know, I did a lot of research and I bought a smoke product. Uh, so I don't know, you know, now I look back on it and think, why the hell did I buy that? But it got me started. And, you know, slowly by the, you know, that was probably January, February. That's whenever then, they came out with like everything, right? Yeah. Priv. Oh yeah. I, yeah. That's, that's what, whenever my, my first products, whenever I got back into vaping was the same thing. Yeah. I bought a, uh, what was it? The, the little stick one that with the tank on it. And then I got the, uh, G Priv two Lux kit. Yeah. Man, I had the, uh, and I looked at it like yeah. now I'm like, man, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> yeah. I had the pro color, the smoke pro color, mm. uh, orange with orange TFV. I think it's TFV eight. Yeah. So, uh, and then, you know, slowly, probably closer to spring, maybe beginning of summer kind of got into RTAs and, you know, building my own coils and, you know, I've always been kind of a numbers guy. So I'm looking at, you know, I can spend this much money to get a coil every couple of weeks, you know, maybe a week with smoke coils. You might get a week, <laughs> uh, or I can just do my own and just replace the cotton you know, a couple of times a week and I'll use the same coil for months at a time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just decided I want to do an RTA because I don't, you know, drippers, I wasn't really that familiar with. And, and you know, how much do I drip on it? You know, I really don't want to dry hit was another thing that I was thinking about. And so, you know, got into the RTA side of it and, you know, started out with single coil RTAs and, you know, I got a few dual coil RTAs still sitting over here now. Uh, and at that point, I went on vacation and while I was on vacation, I found the vape stew. And first time I watched the vape stew, I was hooked and ended up joining the discord that night. And at that point, uh, I found a community and I found a family where, you know, we were all there with each other and we all cared about each other. And that's kind of when advocacy really clicked with me was during the times, the first times I was in the discord and watching Joel and, and you know, everybody else on the vapes do and how they covered everything. And, you know, especially with Joel, because he can get his point across angrily, but in the nicest way possible, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense, you yeah. know, he can, he can be really angry about it, but then he's nice about the way he says it, which really impacts me because that's the way I try to be, you know, I want you to understand how passionate I am, but I want to do it in a way where it's courteous to you. I don't want to come across as brash or harsh. Yeah. And you don't want to scare people away. You want to keep them right. more. Yeah. I mean, I, I have been known to be an asshole just to be frank, but it's simply because I'm so straightforward and I, I'm not a sugarcoat person and it's hard for me to sugarcoat anything because I'm just so it just, I think it, and it comes out. So I try not to be as blunt as I normally am. Uh, but you know, during that time is when it really clicked with me about advocacy and, you know, from when I started vaping in 2018 until those summer months, you know, I was still a dual user, you know, it, it had gotten less and less with the cigarette side and more and more in the vaping. And, about that time, I finally said, you know what? I'm just going to lay them down all together. I can do this with this vaping. I can be satisfied. And, you know, of course, that's, you know, a whole desk full of stuff later. You know, now, now I'm satisfied because I can go from this one to that one and then go back to this one or that one. It, you know, it, a lot of people can do it with one setup. You know, with me, it takes about five or six just because I like different flavors. Uh but that's, you know, that's kind of where I'm at now. You know, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at and it make a, makes a huge difference for me, uh, health wise. You know, I, you know, once I finally set the cigarettes down and went strictly to vaping, it's impacted my life tremendously on the health side. Uh, you know, I'm a diabetic. And so one good thing is with vaping is I can get my sweet fix from vaping. You know, I don't have to have cookies or snack cakes or anything like that because I can get shamrock cookie 
You know, I can get a thin mint cookie right here through this device and it gives me no sugar. But I still, my body gets that feeling of, hey, I'm satisfied with nicotine and I'm also satisfied with the sweet fix of something that I'm really craving. Uh, but that's, you know, that's really me. You know, I, I try to be just as transparent as I can. Uh, you know, if anybody ever has a question for me, you can hit me up on Instagram. You can ask me here. If you're in the Discord, send me a DM. Uh, you know, I'm an open book. Mm -hmm. He is. He. I mean, honestly, if y'all aren't in the Discord yet, which I believe everyone that's on here is, but if you're not on the Discord yet, get in the Discord. Go answer those questions on the Stew Crew. Uh, is, the vape, is the Vape Stew Crew or is it the Stew Crew on? Uh, vape Stew Crew. The Vape Stew Crew over there on Facebook. Facebook. Answer the questions and then go look in the announcements. Go download Discord. And then you're probably going to want to go download Zoom too if you don't already have that. But go download those two and get in the Discord and go to the welcome page and say hello. I think it's all you have to say. And then they let you in pretty much. Yep. But, I mean, you have to answer those questions. And honestly, whenever I first started back vaping, uh, the real reason why I got into advocacy was uh, you the the laws have changed so much from whenever I was vaping the first time. And like the first time I was, the last thing I think I bought was um, a Segeli 150 TC. So that's right once temperature control started coming out with the, I think it was the Crown 1 or Crown 2 uh, sub tank. And then I yeah. had a whole bunch of mech mods. Uh, I had like the Chiyu, the turtle ship and everything like that. And then I eventually stopped vaping. Cause like, you know what? I don't need it no more. I'm fine. I'm, I don't need nicotine. I, I, I should be okay. And instead of going yeah. to zero nicotine and seeing how that was, I just said, no, I'm good. I mean, I don't need to spend money anymore cause I don't need it. And then I eventually got a more stressful, hard job. Uh, I believe I talked about this yesterday too, but I found a more stressful, hard job as a supervisor. So, I mean, stress started coming back and I was like, man, well, I might, I might need to start doing something. And I eventually found myself smoking and dipping. And it, I mean, it started getting back to me real bad. So, I mean, I did that for like two, three months. And I said, man, you know what? Screw this. I'm going back to vaping. I know I'm going back to something I know. And a buddy of mine, I said, Hey man, let me borrow something of yours. I know you just started vaping again. Let me borrow something of yours. So that way I can uh, get back into vaping. And honestly, the guy who helped me, I honestly just helped him about two months ago, get back into vaping. He got, he found himself with a str more stressful job going to chewing tobacco again, had another kid, even more stress, start chewing again. And then now he's back vaping. And I mean, he, he, he's loving it. I mean, chewing doesn't like make you run out of breath and everything like that, but it's, it's terrible for you. It's terrible for your mouth, your teeth, your gums. And I mean, I'm just glad that he finally got to stop, especially because me and him hang out all the time. And he was like, yeah, man, I need I need to start vaping again. I'm like, man, just start doing it. I'll give you something to use. He came over one day and I gave him a setup and I gave him a, I don't know, I have a crap load of juices. I gave him like five juices. Like, here, man, vape through all this. And then he just started vaping again. So, I mean, it's always, it's always the feeling of helping someone out close to you or not close to you is always great because, I mean, you're getting that person off of a tobacco product and possibly extending their lifespan. Right. But there was one other topic I forgot that I want to talk about before we got off here. And it is an actual good topic. It is that Colorado beat the, uh, the tobacco, uh, or was it? Oh uh, yeah. The tax. Vapor, yeah. The vapor tax is a 62% tax that they yes. defeated. And from what I've heard, the FDA and Big Pharma or Big Tobacco actually helped them out on this one. So, I mean, that's something that's really good to hear. Yeah. Because, I mean, I mean, whenever a, a tax on vapor products or tobacco products, since they're going to start putting vaping in there with tobacco products and it's going to be in the same category, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure if, if it starts doing that, you're going to see a lot more of the FDA trying to help out on this because they don't want to see their products go for more expensive either. They want to keep their products at what they're at. So, I mean, that's something that's really good is that they actually helped out. Now, I know we're not all for them, but that is something that's really good that they actually did help out with try to uh, save 
uh, vaping and tobacco and all this with the sales tax. Because I mean, honestly, if there's people out there that want to smoke cigarettes and they don't ever want to vape, they just want to keep smoking. Like I got a buddy who I gave him a uh, a rock pod system. I, I bought it for a review and I wanted to try it because I saw I think his uh, MF vapes. He he had one. He's like, yeah, dude, these things are so good. And they're like eight dollars. I was like, well, I'm gonna try to buy one of those. Let me get one and see how well this pod system is. And it's not that bad. I gave my, I gave it to one of my buddies who was smoking. And he, I was like, well, here, just try this. Oh man, I'm never gonna stop smoking. I'm never gonna stop smoking. And to this day, yeah. he still smokes. But I've cut down how much he smokes by half just by giving him my eight dollar pod system. Right. And I got and, you know it's the it's the free. little things you can do that that can impact somebody like that. Mm-hmm. You know, even if, even if it's only cut by 50%, that, you know, that is progress, you know, it's not exactly optimal for, for what we want, but it is some kind of progress. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's, it's not all about getting people off of cigarettes. It's all about helping their health and their overall health. I mean, it's not going to help a whole lot, but it's still going to help. Right. And I mean, it, and it's not like I just said, it's not about helping their the, that, but it's also not about giving stuff away. I'm not telling everyone to go out there and give away your stuff. Me, I have, I mean, I review products. So I have a lot of stuff I buy just for a review and I review it and I don't ever touch it again. And pod systems are one of them. The Orion, I still use it every now and then. I actually just picked it up the other day and put some sad boy in it. But I mean, honestly, there's a lot of products that I buy and I do not touch again. There's a lot of products I buy and I don't review and I still don't ever touch them. I just don't really like them. So, I mean, that's what I do with my the stuff that I know I really can't make money off of if I try to resale it. I'm like, you know what? Let me just give a pod system away because no one's going to want to buy a pod system, a used pod system. Let me just give one away. And honestly, you don't even have to do that. The The easiest way is just help someone get set up. Oh, man, I don't want to spend $40, $50. Show, I mean, yeah. everyone knows how to buy stuff online set them up and show them how to buy that online. I mean, it's super easy. All you got to do is take five minutes out of your day, show them your websites you go to. I mean, hell, subscribe them to like, I'm subscribed to, I think, vaping cheap and cheap vaping or something like that. I get emails every day of cheap products or products Mm -hmm. that go on sale or deals of the days and stuff. So, I mean, that's something super simple and easy that everyone can do is just show them how to do something online show them where to find it at because i mean they can google it but they might not find the best source or they might not find it for the cheapest that's like my buddy he always orders stuff I'm like dude why'd you do that he's like what do you mean it's like dude i got a discount code i could have sent you or i, I know exactly yeah. where you could have got that same product for cheaper mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm a very cheap person i might have some expensive stuff but most times like all my sad boys i spent like under nine dollars for and i have yeah. the whole line so i mean there's there's easy and cheap ways to everything. It's just as a hobbyist, it's not very cheap, but you know where no. the cheap stuff <laughs> is. So help out people. I mean, that's all you got to do. Honestly, that's one of the easiest ways to help out, get people off of smoking is just do that. Cause like the buddy I gave the rock pod to, he's like, well, all right, man, I, well, I think I'm done with the pod system. I'm like, why? He's like, oh, the, I think the coil is burnt. It's like, hell, I'll show you where to get them. They're like $5. Yeah. Like, oh, really? He's like, I thought I had to throw the whole thing away. I was like, nah, dude. I was like, here, let me see it. I, I took him to the website and he ordered some and I mean, he's been loving it. So yeah. I mean, he hasn't quit smoking, but he's got, he's getting there. He's getting there. Yeah. And you know, it's different for everybody. You know, it took me, you know, around, you know, five to six closer, even to seven months before I finally was not a dual user because a lot of people will start out as a dual user because they're so dependent not just on the nicotine, but all the other stuff that's in that cigarette that you're addicted to that you don't realize you're addicted to. So, and then, you know, in that you want to not pressure, you know, if you, you know, if I gave something to somebody, it would be with the full understanding of if this works for you, it works for you. If it doesn't, it's yours. You can do whatever you want to with it Mm -hmm. at at that point. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and, and another thing that will scare a lot of people is, you know, they look at the upfront cost. You know, they can go to the any gas station out here, and I know it's different everywhere, but out here, pack of cigarettes, probably six, seven dollars. You know, if they go to their local vape shop, you know, like I said, the vape shop around here has these little 
you know, this is a smoke fit. You know, they have these little pods and they're 40 bucks. You can go online and you can get this same thing for 18 bucks. So a lot of people will just go to that vape shop and they're like, golly, it's, it's, man, it's $40 for one of these, you know? Plus I got to buy liquid. Plus I got to buy extra pods. Yeah. And you know, they're looking at that, just that upfront cost, you know, not, not six months down the road. How much have you spent just to maintain with us being hobbyists? You don't want to look at six months down the road. Cause there's no telling how much we spend on stuff, mm-hmm. especially yeah. if your name's vapor swagging. Oh yeah. And that's one thing yeah. I wanted to bring up is, yeah, the upfront cost is a lot on some stuff, but they, but they think of it as, okay, well, I go and buy a pack of cigarettes every day. That's six, seven dollars. But I have a buddy who buy who used to buy a carton. Uh, I can't remember. That's it's all he'd buy. He wouldn't buy a pack. He would go buy the whole carton. I'm like, well, think about it. It's even easier to show those people. Hey, well, this pod right here, you get an extra pack of pods. You buy the extra pack of pods, you buy the pod system, and you buy a bottle of juice and the 30 mil of juice and everything. <clears throat> You'll probably be spending around what you'd spend on a, a whole carton of cigarettes. And then, honestly, I mean, I'm if, if cigarettes were how much they are, I think in like New Zealand or something like that, the, uh, pe- people would, I think we'd have way more people switching over. I think theirs are up to like $25 or something like that, or yeah. at minimum it's 25 and even New York, I think it's, you know, 17, 18 bucks there. Oh, yeah. B- big cities never go buy tobacco products from. I, whenever I used no. to do tobacco, we were in Florida and I bought a can of the cheapest dip I could find. I was like, I'm not even going to get Copenhagen because I know it's going to be expensive. I think it was like Grizzly or something. That was like the cheapest one they had because they didn't have that much. And it was like eight, nine dollars. And here I was used to spending at that time like three fifty. I was like, yeah. what in the hell? I was like, yeah, next yeah. time I'm pack my stuff. But now yeah. I don't have to worry about that because I vape. And that's also another thing is, I mean, you, there's vapor stores everywhere. So, I mean, if you think you're going on a trip and, okay, yeah, I don't want to buy it. I don't want to bring my bottle of juice because they're going to make me throw it away. I mean, there's there's ways you could travel with it. But if you're worried about that, there's always vapor shops everywhere. And Yeah. Plus, not, plus it's – it's really cool to actually, if you're going somewhere else to stop in a, a vape shop, you know, mm-hmm. stop in, you know, have a good talk with the people that work there, you know, make sure they understand what their, how important their job is and commend them, you know, go in there and, and if they're doing a really good job, let them know, mm-hmm. you know, if they, if they tell you something wrong, you can educate them in the right way that that needs to be presented. Not, not in an asshole way, but in a good way of, you know, hey, I understand, you know, what you're saying, but, you know, kind of the correct way is this way, Yep. you know, and that all comes down to how they're trained and they not, you know, most of these guys, you know, they're every vape shop I've been in lately has been 20 to 25. You know, they may still be in college. They may just be working there a couple of days a week and they're just there for a paycheck. Yeah. You know, it's very, very few and far between. You're going to find a Sean Typhon or, you know, a trees or a Dan Mansfield, you know, those, those people are not easy to find. No. Yeah. So. Like the local lady at my vape shop, she's real big into advocacy. The gentleman who works there, her husband, he's, I think, I don't think he's a dual user anymore, but he had a hard time with it. I mean, even owning a vape shop, he had a hard time with putting down the cigarettes. He was a, it went straight vaping for a while, but he said he didn't transition very well. And he would, he went back to smoking and then he was dual using. And then all these pods came out and I think he ended up finding, he liked the, one of the smock pods or smoke pods that you can, that you actually get two different uh, coils for. And that's actually one of the things that he, uh, he really liked because he could put a six milligram regular nicotine not the salt nicks because he said the salt nicks are making him feel weird. He put a six milligram in there with a sub ohm coil and he, he was loving it. I mean, it all, it's all just about finding what fits you. And Shane, if you ever come down here to Texas, it may be for the Houston one or whatever, but there is a drive through vape shop that is actually over by a buddy's house of mine. I think it's in Wintaga, Texas. 
I've never been there. I really want to go there. Might have to check it out now, but I just brought it up to my, or just came to my mind. There's actually a drive through vapor store. That oh, that's try. awesome. Oh yeah. I think, I think the drive through part is might, might be 24 hours. I can't remember, but it, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I want to see something. I want to, I want to go and actually look at it now, but we're going to start wrapping it up here. Poon sauce, McNasty. He's actually having a, uh, Mr. Uncle Chris over on his channel, Mr. Overdrip. So uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. But Shane, any last words for everyone? Any good words of encouragement or motivation that you would like to speak? Man, it all comes down to your voice. Let your voice be heard. And that's the main thing I can say to everybody out there, everybody watching, everybody on the replay. We really want to get the people that are not just here for the live. We want to reach the people on the replay, the people searching YouTube for anything advocacy. We want to be out there and we want to have our voices heard to them so they can understand that their voice matters. Because I'll tell each and every one of you, man, I love all of you. Y'all are so awesome for tuning in and watching this and you know listening to what Jay and I have to say. And it means the world to us. Uh, just for you guys to be here and to come and and listen to us kind of rant and rave you know we get a little bit of that way whenever something comes up that we're really passionate about and you know just thank y'all again you know let your voice be heard and that's the biggest thing i can tell you and i think that's kind of the way i want to take this you know with with my role is i want i want everybody to understand that all that your voice matters Yep. Does it? You don't even have. You don't have to have a YouTube channel. You don't have to have Instagram, Facebook. If you have any social media, post on there. Let everyone know what you love and what what actually helps you. Uh, tell your friends. Tell everyone. But I mean, that's one of the reasons why I wanted Shane on here is because someone who isn't huge on social media, he always does some badass handshakes. So y'all should definitely go check him out on Instagram always has some really cool mods and uh, always has some really good juices, even though he's been using the shamrock cookie a whole lot lately. Yeah. <laughs> Merge. Uh, but I mean, go check him out. And then also, I mean, like he said, you don't have to be someone, you don't have to be a rip trippers. You don't have to be a uh, grim green or Ruby Rue. You don't have to be any of those people. Like me, honestly, I started my YouTube channel because of one of the guys in the chat right now, Frames Jenklin. I saw him. I was like, man, he's putting a lot of content out there. He has a live show, and he's about to start another live show on another day. I'm like, dude, the smaller people can do this too. And now look how much he's grown, and he's only been doing it for seven months. I mean, I want to give him a huge round of applause for that because, I mean, he's he's one of the biggest influencers for why I actually started a YouTube and I mean, and it's just mainly to get my voice out there. Like Shane said, like I wanted, I wanted just another platform to where I could speak up and ever, someone actually listen. It might be vapors listening to it, but hey, they might be putting it on at their uh, at their vape shop, like Dan said he does. I know Sean does too. Uh, there's a lot of people out there who actually put this show on at their vape shop so other people could see it. One person might see it. They say, hey. I was watching this guy, Mr. Texas Cloud Town and Sean, uh, Shane Oakley. Maybe, maybe, maybe I need to spread the word about that. Maybe I need to tell my friend about it who's been smoking cigarettes for years, or not even that. Maybe it's just, hey, I just heard this one guy talking about it. I mean, I'm not trying to go out there and get famous or anything. I'm just trying to spread the word. I'm trying to make sure that I'm. I'm honestly trying to be a lifesaver. Don't. I'm not a hero. I don't wear a cape or anything like that. But I want to try to save as many lives as possible by getting people off of smoking. And it's not really saving their life, but it's extending their life. I would, I want, I don't like, uh, I think it was Sean Typhon or Dan or someone said yesterday, it, it might be, you might be able to see your kid grow up or uh, be born, but are you going to be able to see your kid graduate from college? I want to make sure everyone can see their kid graduate from everything, be married and all of that. I mean, honestly, it's a, it's a hard time thinking about it. You're not going to be able to make it to your, uh, child's wedding because you don't know if you'll be alive that long and it, it honestly takes you to stop but we're all here to help you the whole vape community is here to help you so make sure if you do have any questions ask like uh frames jenklin always says the only the only uh stupid question there is is uh, a question you don't uh, ask because i mean 
it's the only way to learn and the only way to grow is by knowledge. So let's make sure we get out there. We communicate, let's share our knowledge, but Hey, let's keep vaping on guys and let's go out there and let's, let's throw some advocacy in there. Let's get active. But this was a great show and I really want to thank everyone for joining, but until next time on episode 14, we will see y'all next weekend. Hi everybody. And